Hello, everybody. My name is Noor Ghazi. Please join me on my journey. When I was younger, we would drive by and pass by those big multiple gates that are all connected to a great wall, which is called the Great Wall of, Nain the great wall of Nineveh in the city of Mosul, North Iraq. It is considered one of the earliest civilization in the Mesopotamia. Those gates were huge, amazing, and fascinating. While I stood there to stare at them, I would receive an instant invitation from my ancestry to dive into their marvelous world. Now once I'm there, I will sit to watch how Hammurabi drafted the first law on earth, an eye for an eye. I would then gaze from a distance to see how Gil to, to watch Gilgamesh and share his sorrow over his friend's death in Kido and his perilous journey hunting for an eternal life. Then I would get up to leave the king's castle on the first man-made wheel chariot to drop me at the first library in the world. I would, I would walk around the aisle inside to see the great collection of knowledge that they have preserved only to present it later to the entire world. Now fast forward, I'm visiting Iraq in August of 2018 and I went to the same exact location of which once was a great magnificent world to see only a pile of rubbles on top of the hill. I run with tears in my eyes looking for what, ha for what has left. Where is Lamusu, the deity who protected the city? Where are the gates, the Fort Fiction Wall who kept invaders out for years? But only silence echoed in the forgotten world. I picked a brick where the gate was made of and it crumbled in my hand. A whole culture and civilization disappeared right before my eyes. When a great culture and civilization can be wiped out, gates and great walls are destroyed and buildings are blown up, how do we know what home is? I was born and raised in Iraq, Baghdad. In 2006, my family sought refuge in Syria due to the abhorrent sectarian war that erupted between Sunni and Shia, which are both Islamic sects. And since my Sunni father and Shia mother dared to create a family together, they had to face the consequences of being a direct target for both Islamic radical groups. Now, according to my parents at that time, the journey to Syria was going to be no more than a couple of weeks until things settled down in Iraq. So we made it to Syria with nothing more than the clothes on our back. Those few weeks turned into a few months, which turned into a few years, and eventually into a decade. Two long and harsh years in Syria where I had to finish my high school. I've never felt integrated into the society and I've always cried for home. It is where I was born and raised. It is where I have my memories, friends, and family. Now in 2008, instead of returning to Iraq, we were granted a refugee status to the United States. So now the idea of home became further away, a thousands of miles away, but it was a decision that my parents had to make for our own safety and future. We settled in the United States and I tried to create that sense of home for myself, but I was never able to. So once in the US, I was stopped by a stranger on the street to be asking me, hey, are you a terrorist? While he was recording me on his phone, I was shocked. I did not have any response. And he goes on saying, well, do you know how to make a bomb? With eye full of tears, I could only look away. And after he left, I felt so lost and I start mumbling with fear. No, sir, I am not a terrorist. I came seeking refuge away from all this terrorism. No, sir, I do not know how to make a bomb because I was away from all these bombs explosions in Iraq. So no, sir. It was an experience of a full package of culture shock for me that I did not know such thing existed until my last year as an undergrad student, which was nine years after being in the United States. After all the struggle of 12 years of my life, I finally had the courage to visit Iraq in August of 2018. Before the plane touched Baghdad's ground, I wondered why my parents weren't here with me 
to fulfill their promise of returning home in only a couple of weeks. I wanted my siblings to be there with me to share the excitements of returning home just as we shared our sadness 10 years ago before landing in the US. But after all, I was ready to be reunited with my home, Baghdad. As I took a step out of the plane, I took a deep breath to smell that special Iraqi air that is full of the Tigris and Euphrates breeze and that is mixed with the palm tree scents that hugged me in a very warm welcoming to say, welcome home. But as soon as I walk inside the airport, I start losing that sense of home. It was collapsing on me left and right. I was immediately disrespected. I felt vulnerable and I knew that no law in Iraq could save me. Baghdad was a sad city. It looked nothing like I left it 12 years ago. Its streets were full of bombs, cars that covered every part of it. I saw a black and sad building that was bombed last year in Al Karade area, which took the lives of hundreds of people who only insisted on celebrating life amidst the darkness. Hundreds of school age children flooded Baghdad Street to beg for money. They were all out of school for years, while smugglers are buying and selling them for lucrative purposes. There were dozens of them at every traffic light trying to sell you a gum, a cigarette, water, or even clean your front window for whatever money that you may hand them. I saw how corrupted my home is, but I still had hope, because I wanted to feel like I was home. So on that same visit, I went to the North City, which called Mosul, to my beautiful childhood memory. And I saw a whole city was demolished. I was told that a 13 years old girl died from a heart attack because she was waiting in her house during liberation, not knowing when the next missile was going to hit her house. I knew exactly how she felt. Because when I lived in Iraq in 2006, anybody could attack your house, kidnap you, rape you, and kill your entire family. I knew exactly how she felt because they were only a couple of doors away in my area when I was her age in Baghdad. I saw how humans have no values. Dead bodies were still under the rubbles in Mosul while children are playing around them like it's a part of their daily lives. After 10 days of water poisoning in Iraq and seeing so much devastation and almost being kidnapped, I told my husband, let's go home. And he said, but we are home. And I replied, in the past 12 years, I did not realize that the United States was my home. I was lost in my home for 12 years. Home is not destruction, violence, fear, or corruption. Home is not where your basic human rights are violated. Home is not saying your last goodbyes to your loved one every time you leave your house, not knowing if you'll return house safe. Home is being brave, tied to your culture. Home is access to education. Home is knowing that you are safe. Home realizing that when you lock your door, nobody would break <coughs> in to harm you. Home is appreciating the new life and opportunity that you're given. Did we know what type of education was taught under ISIS in Mosul? How the seed of violence was being planted in the children of Mosul, while our children here are going to school daily, learning the peaceful curriculum? Did we know that math book for first grade was teaching to find the sum of four bullets plus two guns, which equals six? How about jihad study and physical preparation? They were merely another two books to be added to the curriculum. Did we know that parents who refrained from sending their children to school to learn that curriculum were executed? Or as parent, did we know how disgusting it is to hide your child in the closet when ISIS member knock on your door only to deny the fact that you have a child who is school age? Yes, I was there for a reason because I felt an obligation to show the world what had happened when ISIS took over Mosul. I was there for a reason because I was born on that same land but on a different war. I stood in Al Nuri Mosque where ISIS leader stood to give his famous speech. But I chose to use my peaceful weapon, education, in the face of his disruptive one. 
Iraq is where I was born and raised. It is where I have my first memory. It is where I learned my first word and my first step. It is where I learned the meaning of love. Iraq is where I learned how to be proud when I say I am from Iraq. I am from the first man-made civilization on earth, but I'm also from the same men who destroyed their own civilization. I am from the first land who taught the first letter to the entire world, but I'm also from that same land who broke those letters to replace them with only radical ones. I am from the land that wrote the first law on earth, but I'm also from that same exact land who broke each and every one of these laws. I am from Baghdad, which once was called Dar es Salaam, the city of peace. But I'm also from Baghdad where death hover around its city day and night to break that silence of peace. I am from a Sunni father and a Shiite mother, but I'm also from that same exact land who kidnapped, tortured, and killed a Sunnis and Shiite. To Baghdad, I shall return a sentence that I will always believe in while I try to create the sense of home for myself on every place that I may land on far, far away from Baghdad. I learned how to call the United States my home, which once was an exile. I was able to be making my way through and standing here tonight to have my voice heard. War can break us, but war also can make us stronger to look for a new home. Home is where you get your voice heard. Thank you. Thank you.